I just I just think that um, it's it's more likely that he's got an ace king or ace queen than he has a a, a, a missed heart draw or something like that. What about just folding? Yeah, folding is an option, but I I like to have fun. Um, recreational player, very very bad. Um, opens hijack to eighty, standard open for him. Uh, folds to me. I'm in the middle blind, uh, the ten, and I have ace deuce of spades. Um, normally I'm not I'm not doing a lot of calling from here. Actually, like if I cut off or button opens, I'm just three better folding pretty much. But um. The, the guy in the straddle um, to the left of me is extremely passive. He's like rarely ever three betting. So I just go ahead and make the call. How deep are you guys, um, by the way? We are about 5,500. 5,500 effective. So yeah. rec hijack makes it 80. You decide to call in the second line. I'm, I'm assuming that you never play a call or almost never play a call out of the small blind in a multiple blind configuration. I would assume it's it's um, interesting because the deeper you get, the more probably there is some spots where you can. I think you should ha you could have some calls in in the small yes. blind in a three blind configuration. So like from a cutoff or button open, I pretty much just simplified. I'm three better folding. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, especially from like early position opens, I will you know right. off flat. Like, like nobody else is coming between, right? Yeah, like all flat, like the ace king and ace queen off. Uh -huh. um, some suited broadways, you know, like some pr decent pairs, like hands like that. I, I will work into my flatting range from the small blind, from only from an early position open. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, right, right. That makes sense because I mean, also too, if you're deep, the positional disadvantage uh, is more of a factor. The deeper you are, too. Yeah, like for if sure. you were a hundred is... blinds, you're probably three bet off ace king. You know, yeah, uh, and this is almost uh, right. 300. Right. Okay. So. so you call from the second blind, we'll say the middle blind, which I've indicated here as 2B. Okay. With ace, deuce of spades. Yeah. And the uh, the straddle comes along as well. The guy that you said was tight. Uh, no, just very, very passive. Oh, very, oh, you weren't worried about him squeezing you, basically. Yeah. He's just, like, he's just like never going to squeeze unless he has like queens right, plus. Right, right. So he may even just flat like ace king. So um, flop comes deuce five, six with two hearts. And it just checks through. Deuce of hearts, five of hearts, six of clubs, maybe? Yeah, sure. Checks through. Checks through. Let me ask you a question about your approach to multi-way responsibility. It's something that I've really tried to drive home a lot. And I would say yeah. recent Crush Lab Poker podcasts and videos and how, you know, one of the easiest sort of leaks that you can fix is is playing tighter post-flop multi-way. Well, one of the easiest leaks you can fix is pre-flop shit. But so let's say the hijack C bets and, and maybe not even that large. Let's say he bets like 80 or 100 into 250, okay? You've got a buy, guy behind you. You have ace deuce and the board's deuce five, six. What are you going to do? I'm just mucking. Right. I'm just, that's, right. that's an easy fold. Like, I mean, yeah. there may be something to think about if it's if the six is a spade. Like maybe you can think about it, but like I, I it, for me that's that it's just an instant. Fold and on then, this board. if you were heads up though, any bet eighty or hundred, what would you do? Um, that would that would be a call. Right. And then right. if 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 there was a spade, like I would I would think about starting to work in some check raises there. But you would at least call. That's my point. Is that yeah, you, for sure. You just it just becomes such an easy fold with a guy behind you, right? And it's just always a call, like always a continue at the least if you're a heads up. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd probably even consider folding like like eights or something, like without a heart. Like um, if, 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 if the uh, hijack took like a half pot sizing or something like that with a guy behind me. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting on this board because sev I mean, sevens or eights can sort of turn straightening equity, but... Because you have a guy behind you, though, that is less of a factor, right? Of getting there, basically, by the yeah, end. Yeah, for sure. You know, turning, your, for sure. turning your equity. Okay, so it gets checked through. Pot's 250. Uh, yeah, pot's 250. Uh, turn is an offsuit ace. So I make uh, two pair. So I'm going to put up the ace of diamonds. So deuce of hearts, five of hearts, six of clubs, ace of diamonds. Hero has ace deuce. So a little tricky ace is up here, or hidden ace is up. And this is like the first like interesting point of the hand, I think. Um, I think here there's like two options. I think 
option one is to check raise mm-hmm. and option two is to overbet. And I don't, I don't really like any other options besides those two. Um, yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, I would tell you that my normal MO here is playing this as a check uh, because as I've said, a lot of time in my training stuff is that you'll get the bluff equity, right? From somebody who's going to represent and then the ace X is going to bet off anyways. So that's why I sort of like, um, coming out and, uh, you know, and doing this a lot as a check, but this board's a little bit different because there's straights and stuff out there. And there's a lot of aces up where I always find it strange is on a really dry board. Let's say instead of it coming out, deuce five, six, like it came out Jack six deuce, right? And it got checked around. And now the turn didn't bring an ace, but it brought an overcard. And the reason why I think an ace is a little bit different is because there'll be a representation of ace X suited like you have, right? Which will make aces up. But let's say it's jack six deuce and now the turn's a king. Don't you think it's really, really strange for somebody to come out out of the blind and bet that that card after that action? I... When guys come out and bet like half pot there, I yeah. raise that pretty much. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> pretty much ninety percent of the time, and it's it, it works. It's just so it's just weird all... because because it's like what <laughs> what is this guy do? It it just doesn't make any sense, you know. But I I think that the ace is a little bit different because there are sort of aces up type of thing. I mean, in general, I would probably go for a check raise, but I guess I could see some merits here though too, where you're. I guess it's maybe just going for gold. Uh, yeah, and I'm, where you... I'm kind of really unbalanced in this spot. Mm-hmm. Going um, f- you, like you're never expecting an ace to fold, even if you were at about like never, 400. Never. And right. so like I, I go for the check raise as a bluff um, because I think I can put a lot of pressure on hands like ace, queen, ace, king. And uh, like if check you raise had, the turn. Like if you had seven, eight of hearts and you were going for a flop check raise anyways and didn't get it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I yeah. would I would go for the check raise and then yeah. um because I just think I'm gonna they're just gonna be like, Oh, I guess my ace isn't good. Like he flopped a set, he flopped a straight, like whatever. Like guys are just gonna fold to a check raise a lot, especially by the river. If you if you if you go and fire the river like pot or overbet, like guys are just gonna fold ace king. Um and I think like if you just go overbet and then pot or even overbet again, like a guy's never gonna fold ace queen, ace jack, ace king. Like they're just gonna call, call. So um, I'm I'm pretty imbalanced in these spots, but it Taylor usually... Taylor Tryon says, if you overbet, you might even fold Ace Seven out. I don't, I don't know. Uh, not not in these games. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I yeah. mean no, no one's no one's folding any. This guy's not folding no, it's, any. It's, ace. He's not not folding it. I don't know sometimes with these guys, what games. These but guys I mean, like, what what percentage of his range is specifically Ace Seven? Right, right. No, like, he, no. <laughs> <laughs> like what is A seven? Like, because because yeah, ace I king mean, and ace queen all offsuit and ace jack from this position are always open. So you can just go down through the fucking combos, right? Yeah, and he mean, has all uh, those he yeah. has all those offsuit combos. He has so many ace X combos. So yeah. um so I actually choose to overbet. I go four hundred. Oh you did bet four hundred. Yeah. All right. So hero bets four hundred. Now where I will say is that I mean I'm me, but if I'm in the straddle and you bet 400, I'm folding a seven with a guy behind me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. I Enough. mean, you sort I mean, of, but then again, though, it's, I mean, it's like, okay, you over bet and then maybe you get an ace to fold out from the straddle. But if you check, it's going to get checked to the other guy anyways. Right. And your intention was to check, raise, and the guy's check raise fold and out the straddle folds anyway. Right, yeah. right, right. So we're not, we're not getting the straddles money anyway. So right, it doesn't matter. Right, right. So you bet 400. Um, okay. Yeah. I bet 400 and he calls pretty quickly. All right. So fold. Fold and uh, yeah, fold from the straddle and a call from the hijack. Hijack calls. So thousand fifty. So I, I, I think it's pretty obvious he's got an ace here. Um, I mean, you would think you know, so because it didn't really bring in any type of backdoor, right? Backdoor flush draw or anything like that, right? Yeah, just and it 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 feels like he would bet off a lot of his heart draws, and it right, also feels flop. like he would. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it feels like a board where he's probably just going to bet his over pairs as well so, so let me ask yeah you this. i mean it, it just me, feels like it. let me ask you this question before you tell me what the yeah. river is yeah. how tricky do you ever get see this is a i mean you're gonna have to get really really lucky with a like a real big blank but but how tricky do you get on rivers here what i mean by that is is that what would 
I, I think the easiest card actually to check raise if a guy just because of pure hand strength, because Rex, you know, maybe they're not even thin value betters, but they don't understand the situation. The easiest card to check raise on the river here would be an ace. Like maybe yeah, the I would, K, I would, maybe the case. I ace. would check an ace. I would check an ace hundred percent. And and for people out there that can really start to think about this spot, if you were the preflop raiser, and especially if you had a competent player that overbet the turn, even if you had up to like ace queen or ace king, and the river was an ace, and the guy who overbet the turn checked, it very well might be a check back because the situation might be so extreme that. The guy was blasting off with a two-way draw that he's just going to check fold, or he actually has you beat, right? Because how often are you just going to lead out with ace nine here for 400? I mean, really what you're representing here is a polarized turn over bet. So if you have a polarized turn range of thick value or a combo draw, when you get to the river, the guy in position with ace king does not beat your turn thick value. That's not counterfeit, right? Ace is full, a straight, a full house. And then your combo draw just misses and it just folds. So you could easily make a case for checking back ace king for the guy in in position, but Rex, they're not necessarily at that level that they won't they won't do that. That's an easy one. What about like an offsuit 10? Do you think there's just more value to be had by making your hand look like a draw, or do you ever try to get like tricky with it? Or a deuce? I think, I think like Maybe on like a deuce or a 10, like the guy's going to bet a lot of the times. He's just he, like guys, guys bet more thinly. Now I think if a guy has ace king or ace queen, like if I check, like a lot of these guys are just going to put in a small or like uh, half pot bet or whatever with like ace king, like that'll happen some of the time. Mm-hmm. But the problem is when I check raise, he's just, he's going to snap fold. Um, so I think I actually get more value when you take into account, like say he bets at 60, 70% and then he folds to like 90% of check raises, but say I just come out and overbet 1.5 X, he's going to call 80, right. 90% of the time. I think you just get way more value by just coming out and betting unless, like you said, the turn is an ace. The river's an ace. Um, or the and, river's and, an ace. And yeah. you could, to be perfectly honest with you, you could even make a case where you still might not check raise an ace on the river. Because you just, it's just a situation where you could just overbet and you're just 100% going to get called, and maybe only 70% of his aces like bet call. <laughs> you know what you I mean? Could, you could literally just go 2x pot. Right, right. So, like, it would just be a disaster if he checks back like ace 10 on a river ace or something. Um, but yeah, I tend to have that approach to squish, like, where, you know, maybe in a theoretical spot, you could throw in some check raises for value as bluff, but it's just a disaster when they check behind. And, and I, you know. I think you made a really good point. Like I'm, I'm never betting like ace nine on this turn. So like right. if, if, if people don't understand, that's the reason why you're either taking like an overbet sizing or checking here because like you're, you're repping two pair plus or a huge draw. Right. So it's, it's a polarized, like, it's a, it's a polarized spot. And then again, like I said, it's interesting because if the river rolls off an ace, the guy in position, his hand doesn't improve. I mean, it improves in the sense that it's trip aces with the king kicker, but it doesn't improve against what your polarized turn range is. He's still losing to the value portion of your polarized range on the turn. Or you have exactly. a block and you're just check folding. Exactly. Anyway, anyway so it's 1,050 and uh, what's the river? The river is an offsuit six, so uh, I get counterfeit. I'm going to put out six of diamonds. So... Deuce of hearts, five of hearts, six of clubs, ace of diamonds, and the river is the six of diamonds, okay? And this is the same reason why, I mean, I don't think there's any reason really to come out and bet here. I'm just going to get snapped off by ace king, right? Like, I, I lose well, now I to mean, ace king, For the, queen, for the like... same reason why you were going to overbet the river and get called is the same exactly. reason why you shouldn't overbet the river here. <laughs> exactly. So, like, <laughs> this, is, this is how I like to explain, like, when people ask, like, well, you know, how do you know when to like lead the river as a bluff versus when to check raise the river as a bluff? Well, when you have showdown value and like, you know, when when you go ahead and overbet here, you're not getting anything that that beats you to fold. So like, there's no reason to just come out and lead here. So yeah, yeah, I mean, that um, definitely makes uh, perfect sense for sure. Uh, so I so you're all and- right with giving up here, and then what? Just once in a great while, maybe he like checked back like queens or kings or something and you're good on the flop i mean yeah i yeah. just i just think I'm, I'm beat here all the time it's probably just gonna go check check but like if i bet here like i'm i'm just getting snapped off by ace king ace queen so uh-huh. like there's no point to betting yeah um so i'm i'm pretty much uh i'm just resigned to to lose this hand 
And uh, then I check and something interesting happens. He bets 750. Oh, it's one of these spots again. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. I love them so much. What are these spots again? Well, so, I mean, we just, I mean, we, we, I didn't even mean to like, we, we, all that stuff that we talked about the last few minutes actually applies here too. When we're saying, well, how often is he betting, you know, ASEX here for value, right? He really, and the six doesn't really, the six doesn't really change anything too. I mean, we were talking about how he shouldn't really bet ace king or ace queen when the river's an ace. I mean, it's the same thing here, right? Yeah, it's because I still have, I mean, there's less combos, I guess, uh, but I, I'm, I still have either a busted draw or a boat. A busted draw, a boat, or some hand that got counterfeit that's going to fold, which is exactly. what you had. I mean, yeah. so, so there's a small part of your value range that gets counterfeit that you just fold. Your busted draw, you don't, you know, you're smart, so you don't blast off because you know you're going to get called. Or you have the guy beat, right? Exactly. With a with yeah. boat or... So I don't... It's interesting because we would... You and I assume that an ace would bet. I don't know if ace-king or ace-queen here is betting. I know, it sh I know it shouldn't. It sounds to me like you think that he's betting like ace-king. Well, I just, I just think that in this player pool, uh, recreational players are going to bet pretty much all their flush draws and all their value on this flop. Um, so I, I, it just, it's more believable for me to believe that he's betting ace king or ace queen for thin value than it is that he has a bluff here. Because like, I, I just think like if the guy flops like nine, 10 of hearts or, uh, you know, ace, ace, eight of hearts or something. He's just betting all the time. Um, so I just, I just think that, um, it's, it's more likely that he's got an ace king or ace queen than he has a, 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 a missed heart draw or something like that. What about just folding? Yeah. Folding is an option, but I, I like to have fun. The only, I mean, the only thing that I would say is, is that I just wonder, I just wonder if you're ever going to step in it here and run into something that's like strong, like, I, I mean, I, I, all those hands probably do bet off the flop, but like, I don't know, trip sixes or something that's like strong. I mean, you would think that if you were still playing a set, you'd probably raise the turn. Uh, yeah, I just, gonna I, raise the turn you know, it's, it's like, you have to sort of, really slow playing sets on this flop though. Probably. No, I mean, probably not. I mean, you, against two people, you just kind of have to weigh maybe the sizing with how often is he going to end up with something that's actually really strong. Yeah, the whole thing is just like doesn't really have. I oh man, I don't even probably folding is better than calling. So this one's close. What kind of sizing are you thinking about here? Um. I just figure, like, like you said, if he does have something strong, if he if he just happens to turn up with um, a six or pocket the quad sixes or something ridiculous here for some reason, like, I'll you know, I can I can save myself a thousand dollars, and he's gonna fold the ace king or ace queen anyway to a you uh, know, to a large sizing. So, um, <laughs> I. Gotta read the I CLP subscriber James Conboy says, is this a better spot to check raise than Rampage's river check raise on the launch stream last night? And that was, uh, I'm sure you didn't see that squish. Rampage, the vlogger, decided to float with absolutely nothing on a King 10 7 5 board with Ace 9 suited, call a turn, and then like check raise all in on an eight river and the guy had like a set of kings actually it wasn't even there wasn't even a straight it was a huge punt for like eight thousand dollars that sounds uh, like a good game no i think this is a better check race than Rampage's check race but uh yeah so you so you you think you can get the guy to full base king always just for the same reason we talked about on the turn for the well, same I mean, reason this why is, would... this might be sort of you know we've had a high level discussion here but this we, we this might be a large exploit sort of just kind of feel type of thing you know yeah and it, you know it's the same reason why we talked about on the turn why i never check raise for value here mm -hmm. uh it's because mm -hmm. they overfold and so by that logic if i'm never going to check raise for value because i think they're going to fold everything why not do it as a bluff 
if you think he has enough ace king here, I'm just I'm not super convinced. So what did you do? Sounds like you you went for it. Thirty nine hundred. Thirty nine hundred. How did you find out that sizing? Just you're just like I don't want him. I don't want to make it cheap where he somehow gets curious with ace king. Yeah, I just wanted to go large. I thought about just going all in, but I thought, okay, like if he, I don't know, I probably should just jam. But like, I'm like, all right, if he just ends up with a boat or quads here, like I saved myself a grand. So yeah, um, <laughs> so yeah, it's like big enough where it's like scary. But um, yeah, it, it'll get the job done against Ace King, Ace Queen, I think. And what happened? He uh, he thought for about thirty seconds and then flashed um, an Ace King and he folded. He flashed Ace King yeah he did he showed it wow i mean that's knowing your players i will say that it's not necessarily a brag call because the last time you called in this did not i know work. i need to i i, I do i know uh, <laughs> I, I i need to i need to have somewhere i just get snapped off because it, it does backfire in my face sometimes i promise i mean you have to have um, a real real feel for the fact that this guy has like a specific sort of hand zoned in and sometimes you can get that if you play with a player enough on a routine basis, you can really, really sort of zone into what they're doing. And it just comes from experience. But like on paper, I would not think I would have to really know the player. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so for sure. I mean, I get like... every time I play in a new player pool, I get crushed for like two to three weeks. Like just every, <laughs> yeah. every time I get crushed. Because you try and to then play like, like this and it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. And then like after i play with guys for like two three four weeks like then my win rate just goes up and up and up and up but like yeah for sure like I, if i try this stuff against unknowns like it just it it backfires a lot yep all right squish thanks for being thanks for uh being patient thanks for the call it was a good one 